Hey guys, all right, so don't mind my raspy voice. I lost it. But here I am starting with a bunch of Rice Krispie treats and making them into the shape of the couch. Basically sticking them together, trying to figure out what's the best size for it. I think this took up like, what, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight of the little Rice Krispie packs. You can make it yourself to save money or you know, you can just buy them. Anywho, because the French couch has like a longer tip from the top, it's more curved, I'm mushing it in so that I can create that curvature around the edges of the top. So it seems like I'm taking a while on this part, but you wanna have a good base because, you know, once you cover it, you really don't wanna uncover it. All right, so I'm basically putting on the first layer of fondant and I put on two layers because the first layer is gonna cover up all those bumps and stuff that you see. You can see it's really, really bumpy. And uh, I use cornstarch to smooth it out when I do cover it up. I didn't make the fondant big enough so I had to wrap that in the back, but that's the back, so who cares, right? Unless you're like really picky about those things, but anyways. So I use cornstarch, it really helps to smooth it out even though it's still gonna be bumpy because obviously it's Rice Krispie Treats and Rice Krispie Treats are really bumpy, but it helps to smooth it out a little bit so that you can put your second coat of fondant. Is it coat? Cause coat stands for paint, but yeah. So now I'm laying out the second coat of fondant. This is going to be for the couch part and I made it a little thicker so that I can make sure that it's smoothed out and I'm not going to press so hard on it so that it doesn't get the indentations of the Rice Krispie Treats. And I'm using those X-Acto knives or the pen blades or whatever that were on sale and everybody went crazy and bought some because they do work great. And five of them for $10 is an awesome deal. Cutting out basically where the couch is and what I'm gonna do is start to indent well, smoothing out that side so that it blends easily. Um, again, putting on another layer because that's the bottom and you want it to be smooth. But you can see that I didn't go all the way to the edge because you're going to put the fringes on that part. So I'm using my little, uh, that tool with like a triangle end. I don't even know what it's called, but it's got a little smooth triangle end. And I basically lined the couches with it. All right, there's no middle cut in the couch like you normally would think couches would have. I noticed that when I was making the friend's couch, but you could see where I added the line in for it. Now I'm making the back, or not the back, the, the sofa part. Yeah, see, and again, I don't wanna mush it down too much cause I don't want to show those indentations of the Rice Krispie Treat part. You can still kind of see, you know, but it's okay. It gives it an effect of a couch. All right, so, I don't know why it paused, but let's see if it continues. Oh, it didn't pause. That was just a mistake on my phone. Anywho, all right, you can see I'm smoothing it out to the back and remember how it's got that little curvature from the tips. So I'm making sure that that is still there, okay? Also, I'm mushing it in from the sides because again, it has that curvature that you're looking for. All right, time to put the details onto this baby. So I am using that little smoother triangular tip thingy and basically indenting the lines there's eight of them so you want to make sure that they're all equally you know separated so that you know yeah it's even and then you know that star tip in your toolbox that you're always like what am I going to use this thing for you can use that for the couch cushion buttons you know gives it the look of like a plush couch after that, I'm gonna use a little stitcher and makes it look like it's got stitches going on there. So I added it onto the top too. You didn't really need to, but I thought, why not? Again, back to that little triangle tool thing and lifting them up, connecting those dots. All right, here is the tricky part. Now, I took a orange piece of fondant, kind of rolled it out to make it smooth and you want it to be both the same length and a good equivalence in thickness. So what I did was I kind of smushed it towards the end so it's got like a longer 
I don't know how to describe it guys. I just smushed it towards the end so you can see me rolling there. And then I'm going to see how well it fits there. So you add some water to make sure it sticks and then smooth it out from the bottom so that it connects nicely. So you'll see me doing that. And I'm still figuring out the curvature of it because you want it to be curved. If you look at the friend's couch, it's curved. But you also want the front of that armrest to be flat because you want to put the scroll on there, which you're going to see me do in a minute. You know, my voice ain't so bad like this. It's like, this is kind of a sexy thing we have going on here as I'm recording my friend's voiceover for the couch, right? Some soothing, you know, raspy. No, I don't like it like this. I want my voice back. Anywho, so I'm doing the same thing for the other side, trying to make them even. Careful not to touch the middle because I don't want to leave any marks that I, I don't want to smooth out later. All right. Mm-hmm. Still smoothing out. I don't really know what to add in here. I could just keep talking. Or maybe not. Okay. As you can see, it takes a while to smooth out. By the way, if you didn't notice, this video has been, I think, tripled the speed just so you don't sit here listening to me for 30 or I'm sorry like an hour because that's how long it pretty much took which isn't bad when you think about it so now the fringes I measured out the size that I'm going to need and I'm making a straight line get my little cutter and start um, cutting out the little fringe lines making sure not to oh I'm just adding details here like the couch has been smushy but making sure not to cut towards the end all the way you only want you'll see what I mean so I'm like cutting it so that there's fringes but not all the way to the end okay am I doing that yeah I'm doing that okay there you go all right why does it look like it's taking forever I really shouldn't take that long to cut fringes okay so we're gonna add some water there and stick it on. See, it's going to cover that bottom part. You didn't have to worry about that, you know, that edge part. There you go. There's the fringe of the couch. And last but not least, I'm using that scroll thing that you're like, what in the world am I going to use these Wilton molds for? But they come in handy. So I'm using the scroll part. Uh, you can see I messed up the first time. Stupid things sometimes don't work. And you got to do it over and over and over. Make sure you know you put either Crisco or cornstarch. You know, that's the trick. All right, so I take it. It's not going to fit exactly. Cut off the edge I don't need, and I basically kind of turn it to fit my needs, you know. That side of the couch, to be honest with you, was giving me a hard time. It was not even. It wasn't straight. The scroll didn't turn out that good. I'm cutting out one more scroll because I'm going to put it at the tips of the top of the couch that also has a scroll. There you go, fixing up some loose ends. And still have the other side as well. See those Wilton, you know, molds come in handy. It doesn't have to be the same exact scroll, but it's near equivalent. And there you have it, folks. Your friend's couch. Thank you for listening. See you next time. <laughs>